Gun for Newbies back here, and I just wanted to thank everybody who's been liking, subscribing. Um, we're continuously growing the channel each and every day, and it's definitely a wonderful thing. So, um, you know, want to thank everybody for that to become a supporter of the channel. Now it's in the description to become a Patreon supporter. It's just a very small subscription, in case anybody was wondering, just to you know help further. Um, you know, for all the uh, tests that we do, and you know everything that you see on the channel is a hundred percent funded by me. And so I kind of wanted to talk today about the Radian Ramjet. Okay, so uh, you'll see in the video that I actually have the Ramjet on this gun, and that's just because this one was completely, I'd never been shot yet, and the tolerances on it ridic were ridiculously tight for some reason. Um, as far as like the slide, when I tried the Radian Ramjet in this gun, it just felt like the slide didn't want to come back because the lockup on the Radium Ramjet's better than, you know, just the regular lockup on the regular barrel. Now, I have noticed on the Gen 5s, uh, since it comes with the Marksman barrel, it is a little bit tighter, so it's not all over the place. This one's actually surprisingly pretty well, but I also put the um, new, uh, the brand new guide rod in here. So this guide rod has been shot very little, um, but you can see here on the barrel, That's about how much wear you have, just, you know, uh, I would say an adequate amount. Um, I want to say in terms of round count, this gun might have 300 rounds through it. Not a whole lot here on the front. Um, very little here on the side. Um, so it, it's, you know, the DLC for these guns is, it holds up really well, uh, long story short. Now, in com comparison to the Radian, There's virtually nothing. Some very, very light marks here. Now, I only put probably 70 shots through it. I didn't have a ton of ammo, and I also didn't have a ton of time um, at the time that I was shooting them. And, um, you know, I want to talk a little bit more about honest comparison. So, I really like the way that this uh, design was structured, and I talked about that in my last video about, you know, the lockup was great. Um I still think that the Norso setup and barrel is tighter. I'm trying to give you true expectations because I've seen a lot of people buy these setups and immediately resell them, and I've wondered why. And now I kind of understand. So it's not that I'm completely let down with it, but from what you see on the internet, you definitely get a little bit of a false uh, expectation, especially because... Um, People swear that it's got literally no muzzle rise, no recoil, everything like that. So I have some shooting videos uh, so that way you can see the recoil difference from this guy to this guy. Uh, and the cool thing is there are people that have, uh, I believe it's called chronographed, uh, which where, you know, you measure the difference in velocity from a ported to none, or I guess this is compensated, whatever. Um <clears throat> any sort of model that's ported or compensated versus a regular model because I know some people have that worry. However, it comes after the extension, so you're actually in a little bit more in barrel length, um, you know, as opposed to like porting, I think you lose a little bit more and people are saying that they're losing about an average of 30 feet per second, which is nearly nothing. Um, so for the amount of re recoil reduction, I think it's worth it. Now, there's a couple things that go into that. So does this setup work for you? I don't know. For this gun, it absolutely does. I plan to run irons, so I don't want. I didn't want the porting because I didn't want to um, dirty up the front sight uh, actively while I'm shooting it and have to worry about cleaning that constantly. It's not that it's constant, but you will clean it probably every you know hundred shots or you know as you get near that. So, with that being said, uh, this is the route that I went because this uh, tends to get all the. Uh, propellant away from the actual front sights it actually does a really good job of not dirtying up your light as well so that was something that was pretty cool um i at the time the radian was on this guy so after shooting about 75 70 or 75 shots um the tlr 7a was completely spot free which i really liked um so i do plan to actually get a tlr 7a for this guy i actually do enjoy the actual push 
push to activate a little bit more than I like this. I wish this activated on both sides because I would prefer to activate on the left side, but the left side is temporary, the right side is permanent, so you can actually toggle it on. And the left side's like a, it, it gives you resistance. You can almost like push it and then let off and it returns, which is a nice feature in theory. However, for me, I don't really enjoy that as much as I thought I would. So I don't uh, plan to keep this light on here forever. So, um, but for purposes of the video, I wanted to keep it as fair as I could since this one had a light. This is about two and a half ounces, and then this one's about four and a half. So you're getting a little, two more ounces, but this one was not imported. I will tell you the difference in recoil was noticeable, but it was not, it did not feel like 44%. Now, there's a couple things that go into that. One, I'm running an 18 pound that you can see the original recoil spring is in here. That could have a little bit more to do with it. Um, I felt like it returned and I, it was a majority of it felt recoil though. As soon as the slide came back, I feel like I was feeling more of it, but that could be a combination of trying to prepare for the return because this is hitting a lot harder going forward. I've read a lot that some people really do enjoy the 15 pound return spring in these. So we're going to see how that goes. Now, one thing that really um, was interesting and you'll see in the range footage is the uh, port ejection. Um, so I did not really, I wasn't really too much of a fan of it. And I don't know if it was simply just because the gun hadn't been broken in yet. And that's why it was giving me some funky ejection patterns. But nevertheless, that was something on my radar. And if you don't pay attention to your ejection patterns, you probably should. Because as your uh, slide and your barrel and everything gets a little bit more mucky, um, it's going to run a little bit slower. And if you're not getting decent enough consistent ejections, like if they're sporadic everywhere, that's your gun telling you that, you know, you probably have some issues upcoming uh, and you're going to need to probably oil it, clean it and everything like that. So that's obviously something to consider as well. Um, how would this hold up? You know, I've shot uh, my my SIGs, I've shot, you know, they haven't been ported. Well, actually, my Spectre Comp is compensated. So I won't say that because I've shot them, you know, 2,000 rounds or so without cleaning. I'm not sure this can go through the same same thing. So at some point, I do plan to test that. But as of right now, uh, I'm still a little bit skeptical. If you were to ask me how much recoil reduction, I'd probably say it was closer to 25%. Now, it could be a little bit more unjust because I did have a TLR1 on this one and I had the smaller light. I mean, you know, two ounces is a pretty significant difference, especially when it's under the barrel. Um, I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but if you've ever shot a gun without a light and then put a light on it and shot it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So another thing that I've thought about as well is getting a tungsten guide rod, getting a few different springs and seeing what I like that runs in there. Just because this works with a regular recoil assembly, you should be able to put anything else. I mean, they're all measured for the exact same length, so I shouldn't have any issues running an uncaptured system in here, like a, a tungsten guide rod. So I've uh, played around with that idea as well. Um, Radiant sells their own sort of uh, recoil spring. However, I'm a big fan of the tungsten because it essentially is li like the life of the gun and you can switch it to any gun. And it's so much easier to run an uncaptured system if you want to run a different spring um, as opposed to a fixed system that is captured and you got to buy a whole new assembly, especially because springs are like $9. So that's the cool thing about it too, is after you put six, six 6,000 rounds or however many rounds and you feel like the maybe you feel like the spring weight is just too sluggish or you want to go with a different thing you don't have to buy another $90 whatever rod and I know the Radian one um, you know I'm kind of talking that down a little bit but the Radian one has a quick compression tool so you can actually change out um, the springs that you have in there which is fine at all but I just don't like the fact that it, you have to carry around extra tools which leads me into the next segment um Usability of this is a little bit different too because you have to have a um, Allen key here, as you see, or whatever you want to call that. It's um, you know there's there's several Allen keys that come with RMRs that look exactly like this, but it's actually T15 Torx bit. Um, there are Allen keys that have uh, Torx heads, so that's why I said Allen keys. But and you also probably want to use an Allen key too because if you're using the Torx bit, which is great and all, if you over torque it, you run risk it breaking the bit inside of there, which is why I'm a bigger fan of Allen keys. Okay, so that's why I said Allen keys. I do not recommend using the Torx bit. They send you one. It's great. Just don't over torque it. There's nothing wrong with using them. Just understand you run the risk of breaking it in there. Now, T15 is a pretty big size, so it'd be pretty hard to break that in there. I mean, you probably have to try, but nevertheless, it is a obviously issue in case you get that stuck in there then how are you getting it out 
um, that would be a very sucky endeavor because I feel like you would scratch this all to hell. So um, that is something else that I really don't like and why I'm a bigger fan of porting. However, I didn't, you know, since I want to run iron sights, I don't want to be worried about cleaning them. Now, I did run into a separate issue on the, um, I have a, uh, my setup for my Norsel build. The night vision sights uh, physically have a protruding uh, titrium, I think it's titrium, or uh, it's the glowing effect that the sights have inside, and it comes out. So, funny enough, in this gun, the Trigicon, you can see they're actual flat. So it's like a laminated piece that's over it, and then inside is the rod that glows, which I am a very big fan of, because if you get this dirty, it's a simple wipe, and you're good to go. And the other sights that I have from Night Vision, since they come out, I could not get it clean anymore. I will include some pictures so you can see the cleanest I could get it. But nevertheless, it did have a huge issue for me, which is why I wanted this on my iron sights. One is because um, I kind of don't want to be cleaning them at all. Uh, but if this proves to be a bigger issue for me than, than what I expect, I will absolutely switch both of these over to being ported. Now that's the other thing is too, since you have the compensation coming out nearly at where the barrel ends, I don't feel it's a 44% production, uh, a 44 reduction. Uh, I, like I said, I feel like it's probably closer to 25%. Part of that could be because, like I said, it had a heavier light, but I, I feel like it's a little bit of snake oil. I felt a little bit under... Um, what's the word undersold or you know over promised i definitely felt over promised on this and it's not that it's bad but i feel that specifically for the price i mean you're talking a 389 dollars setup plus taxes shipping everything like that that you got to pay and then also this uh you know finding these is next to impossible um i just i don't know i i really i understand why people are getting them but if you were to shoot this next to a Spectre Comp, you would not, I mean, you would just love the Spectre Comp. Spectre Comp shoots uh, softer by far. Um, I like the trigger weight uh, of the Spectre Comp. I like the grip module better, the texturing's better out of the box. I mean, virtually everything, it's already optic cut out of the box. Uh, it comes with, you know, way better iron sights, even if you don't have an optic. Um, comes with a magwell. Uh, I really just don't, see not that i i wouldn't recommend it it's not that's not what i'm saying it's been reliable it does its job and you can see in the footage that it does reduce recoil however it doesn't feel like a 44 percent reduction which is why i think it's um a little bit misleading especially to newer gun users um they're not going to be able to have the same fundamentals and recoil impulse and uh, recoil management on their gun control as some of the more experienced people and i know there's going to be a lot of people who are like oh well, there's a huge difference i beg you to have two of these side by side and try them because with a good grip on both of them i'm telling you you don't notice that much of a difference you know half i mean 44 percent is pretty close to 50 percent. so i was trying to say this has half the recoil of this one i absolutely disagree um and that's really the difference here is this is not you know, this Radian Ramjet was not sent to me. I purchased this with my own money. And these are my real um, honest thoughts about it. And you guys should obviously know that if you guys are planning to buy a similar setup. Now, would I buy it again? I think I would. Um, I definitely wouldn't say I wouldn't. But I like the fact you don't have to clean the sides. It is nice that it's only one, one screw to uh, maintain these. Um, I like the threadless design. I like the barrel. The fitment on the barrel is better than the OEM one. So it's almost like uh, considerably, it's almost like buying a match grade barrel that helps you uh, have less recoil. So I guess that's a plus. However, um, I do feel that it's a little bit overpriced. If you honestly ask me 389 for this is too much, it should be 275. That'd be what I think would be a fair price. If you could get this for 300 bucks, you know, um, out the door, that would be perfect in my opinion. I think it's a well offered uh upgrade for that but as you're looking at these guns i mean you're looking at a 540 gun or 550 whatever the msrp of these guns is and then you have a with tax a 450 dollars barrel essentially so as you can see by the time you get this barrel and then you have this not to mention the oem trigger that comes in the glock is not good at all um this has actually been one of the heaviest triggers i've ever felt which is why I had it on here, just so that way I could actively shoot it because I have, um, uh, I did a trigger job myself. And I want to say the trigger's probably around, 
maybe three pounds. So I really like it. It's got no, like it doesn't even have a, it's got like a rolling break, which I, I really like. So um, that helped me, you know, shoot a little bit quicker. So that way I could understand the recoil impulse and see how well it returned to zero and everything like that. And I just didn't see a 50, nearly a 50% recoil reduction. So um, would I recommend it? Yes, it was reliable. I didn't have any issues. It ran with OEM parts. The fitment's fantastic. It doesn't actually wear off the DLC and it looks like a flush fit. However, I don't feel that it lives up to its expectations and I feel like it's a little bit overpriced. Um, do I think that longevity, it will hold up? Yes. Do I think it may need a little bit more maintenance to do its intended function over a long period of time? Yes. So thank you guys for watching. I wanted to bring an honest review of this. I know a lot of people that are shooting this are just talking about how amazing of a recoil reduction it does. It's a way different gun and this, this, and this. It does do some of that, but it's not going to be a near half feel experience for you. I'm telling you that right off the bat. And maybe after I change out the recoil spring, I'll have different thoughts. Um, if I add a tungsten guide rod, that's obviously, I mean, this I think is 0.6 ounces and a, um, I think a, a tungsten guide rod's over four times as much weight. So keep that in mind. Um, it's not really still a true comparison, but nevertheless, I want to get this as flat shooting as I possibly can. And I still want it to be reliable, which is why um, I'm a little bit nervous of going to a lighter spring weight, especially when I'm having already inconsistent ejection patterns. But, you know, we will see where this takes us and we will continue from there. All right, guys, today we're going to be comparing these two. So really just to see how the ramjet holds up as opposed to the regular. Now, uh, one thing that I didn't cover um, was cleaning. Now, that is another thing that is a bonus. I like that this comes off, and then you can literally just clean straight across there, and then you can fit a Q-tip because of the way they angled these ports on the inside, it's very easy to clean this. So that, that is a, another bonus. Um, as far as, you know, not trying to bash this completely, I just felt like it was definitely overpromised. Um, and hopefully this has helped you some so that way you don't have over the top expectations. If you want to go ahead and buy it, um, please do so. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying don't buy it. I'm just saying have a clear cut, um, ex expectation of what you get. So you're not completely let down like me. And that typically happens on YouTube. A lot of people are saying they're giving you honest reviews on stuff or whatever. And it just doesn't feel that way. Um, I think realistically that it's a, fantastic product. I just think it's overpriced. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos.